welcome uh, welcome to the uh, to the to um, the second lecture by professor omid amini um so we, we, we yeah so yesterday we could not have a lecture as you are familiar and so today is the second lecture and uh, uh, we are very happy to be back again and uh, we we look forward to the lecture and uh, okay okay so okay then i have to move it for this okay so uh, then um, okay so let uh, so let me start uh, by recalling what we did uh, during the first lecture and of course uh, please stop me uh, if something is uh, uh, if you have questions or something is unclear, this is uh, supposed to be uh, um, yeah, uh, the, the So I, I have made a um, effort to make it uh, as as uh, as, uh, as readable as possible. I'm sorry it was a little bit small, but please stop me if there's something which is unclear. So re recall that in the first uh, lecture we made uh, we set up some notations. Uh, so uh, k, um, k is a base field. Uh, this uh, big K is a valued field uh, which comes uh, with evaluation. This valuation is supposed to be non-trivial. It means that it is not uh, it is not taking all the time value zero outside uh, zero. So it's a non-Archimedean valuation. It verifies uh, the, the, the the property uh, listed uh, uh, the first lecture of uh, non-Archimedean valuations. Uh, and then we define the uh, tropicalizations of points and tropicalizations of polynomials, okay? So first of all, if you take uh, a point uh, which has a coordinate x1, xn inside k star, so all the coordinates are uh, non-zero, then you can define the tropicalization of the point by just remembering the evaluation of the coordinates. So if you do evaluation of x1 up to evaluation of xn. If you have, a, now if you have a subvariety x inside the algebraic torus of dimension n, so this is a subvariety um, given by a zero set of some uh, polynomial uh, equations for polynom for Laurent polynomials. So X has uh, the ideal of definition I. Then you, you can look at uh, the set of K points of uh, X. These are all the solutions, uh, all the solutions uh, to these polynomial equations, which, which have a uh, value inside K, this big K, is algebraically closed, so you have a, uh, um, yeah, if, uh, if you have solution, uh, if you have solution, you see the points. Uh, uh, and then you can look at uh, the tropicalization of these points by remembering just evaluations. It gives you a subset of Rn, and then you take uh, the topological closure of this, uh, and this gives you uh, the tropicalization of X. And I stated, uh, okay, so then uh, we have the tropicalization of polynomials. If you have a polynomial, Laurent polynomial, which has a coefficient Cj living inside this K, this is over J, which are elements of a Z power N. Then you can tropicalize this polynomial, which basically means that every time, every time you see a sum, you just replace it with tropical sum, which is the minimum. And every time you see a scalar, you just replace it by its valuation. And then uh, the, for the product, so you also take uh, the tropical product, which is uh, the convention, the usual uh, addition, addition of uh, values and variables. Then we, I stated the fundamental theorem of tropical geometry, which uh, says that uh, the tropical, this, this tropical, this tropical set, this tropicalization, which is defined by tropicalizing, tropicalizing the points, is exactly the tropical zero set of uh, the tropicalizations of polynomials. And the zero set here means uh, that uh, basically that uh, a zero set of a tropical polynomial is the set of all, uh, all uh, points in Rn, such that if you look at uh, the, uh, so every term here gives you uh, an affine function because it is a linear function in Xi and there is this constant. So you get uh, this uh, affine function. And the zero set of this tropical polynomial is a set of points in Rn such that this minimum is achieved at least twice. Okay, so it's at least twice. Alternatively, this is the set of uh, points which are uh, non smooth. Okay, so you have at least twice, so you see that uh, there is a branching uh, somehow. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a set of points in Rn such that uh, this, the zero set of I mean, the, the, the value of uh, this function, if you look at the fun this function, this function um, uh, 
is not a small power at those points. So this is the summary of, uh, I didn't prove this fundamental theorem, but I, uh, I, I sent you some uh, notes uh, which contains uh, the proof uh, of, uh, I think it's a, full, it's a complete proof. And you can also, if there are some references also in the notes I sent you, you can, if you like to have more uh, detailed uh, proof, you can look at those uh, references. Okay, so I gave you uh, several uh, examples. Uh, so let me, I mean, let me just uh, finish by uh, the, the, this series of uh, examples. And this is somehow something uh, important uh, because this is the basic uh, example of uh, um, uh, a, a tropicalization, which is, uh, which is somehow, which remembers somehow the essence of uh, the, the algebraic variety itself. So it is somehow the best kind of tropicalization you can expect, expect, you can expect for. And this concerns the, the complement of hyperplane arrangements. Uh, what is a hyperplane arrangement? Uh, you, so here we are working in the projective space, Pn. Let's say we are working over the field. Uh, the, the base field is the field of complex numbers. Uh, And this is the projective space over, uh, over complex numbers. And you take a collection of hyperplanes, H, H0, H1 up to Hn, and these Hjs are, so they are hyperplanes, they, it means that uh, they are given by a zero sets of uh, linear forms. So they are of the form, the sum of, so these linear forms are of the form, so linear combination of coordinates. These are the coordinates of the, this uh, projective space. So Z0, Z1, up to Zn are the coordinate, uh, the, the projected coordinate. And these BKs are uh, elements of this, uh, so this is not, uh, unfortunately, I used the index K, but this DVK is, uh, this is an index here. So these are elements of uh, this uh, field uh, C. And the HJ is a set of all uh, elements of uh, Pn, uh, so that this is vanishing. Okay, so it's a hyperplane in P and C. So now you're interested in the complement of this hyperplane, which is obtained by removing all these points from P and C. And it turns out that since you are removing the set of all zeros of these LJs, then you can use LJ to define a map to the torus. Okay, so how this works? So you take a point of uh, X, is like this complement of hyperplane arrangement. And then you just evaluate uh, these linear forms on that point. So this, this, this gives you a, uh, uh, since X is in the complement of uh, H zero, this is non-vanishing. So it lives inside C star. And you see all the coordinates are non-vanishing because, uh, because we are removing the zero set of all these linear forms. And instead of viewing this as just an element of uh, C power M plus one, you have the diagonal action of uh, C star, which is obtained by multiplying any coordinate by uh, the same scalar. So you just uh, take the quotient, which means that you, you identify uh, two uh, points in C star power M plus one. If there is a scalar lambda in C star, such that uh, the second one is obtained by multiplying all the coordinates of the first one by the same lambda. So this gives you a map from uh, this complement of hyperplane arrangement to this uh, torus. So this is the quotient of uh, this t power m plus one by the diagonal action of the torus of dimension one. And uh, so by, by fixing one of the coordinates to be equal to one, you can see that this is basically a, uh, isomorphic to a tor algebraic torus of dimension m. So this one is isomorphic, uh, the, c star point, the c points are isomorphic to c star power m. Okay, so not, not always this map is an embedding, but uh, this is an embedding. This gives you an embedding of the complement of hyperplane arrangement. It means that it defines a sub variety of uh, this torus of dimension M if uh, and only if these, uh, these, line these linear forms, which define the hyperplanes, generate the whole space of linear forms. Okay, so if you if you choose uh, if you choose these these allies or somehow degenerating the full space of linear forms, then this you get an embedding. Otherwise, you can if they don't degenerate, then you can uh, 
you can uh, uh, you can reduce uh, the dimension somehow and define them. So they live actually in a smaller space, and then you get uh, you get you you have to go to that space, take the complement of the hyperplane arrangement inside that space. Anyway, so we can assume that L zero L M generated the whole space of linear forms. And in this case, we get an embedding. So we use now this embedding to define the tropicalization of X. And the question is, what is this tropicalization? So basically, you, you start with the combinatorial arrangement, which is the combinator of this hyperplane arrangement. You use the, this, the, the, the defining equation for hyperplanes to define an embedding of the complement inside the, the algebraic torus. And now you can take the tropicalization. You started from combinatorics. You went to algebraic geometry. Now we take the tropicalization. You come back to something which is more combinatorial. So now the question is, what is this? And the idea is to give a combinatorial description of uh, this tropicalization. OK, in order to do this, uh, as we saw, so we need to, uh, so the, the fundamental theorem tells you that you can find the tropicalization if you know uh, the defining equations. Also, all the, the, the ideal, which defines the, the subvariety x. And in the case of the complement of hyperparent arrangement, you see uh, directly some of the equations which show up by just looking at uh, the, the linear forms. Okay, so uh, so what is so let's let's give uh, introduce some uh, terminology. Let's say that uh, a subset A of uh, this index set. So remember, we have this linear form L zero up to L m. Let's say a subset A of this index set is dependent. If uh, you, they, you can find coefficients inside C such that uh, you have the linear, the linear combination of uh, the corresponding linear forms is equal to zero. So it means that the corresponding linear forms are uh, dependent. So since now you, you, you view this equation and the, the, the embedding of X inside the, the torus was defined by using these coordinates, the, the coordinates given by Ljs. So every time you see a, a dependent set, in terms of the coordinate we, we put uh, on uh, the torus, we get uh, an equation of this form. Okay, it means that uh, the, the equations for a, x, the space of equations for x inside the torus, uh, contains all these uh, linear uh, linear polynomials. And it turns out that actually you need just to these linear polynomials to define uh, the subset x, the subvariety x inside the, the torus. And in order to get the tropicalization, you just need to look at the, the zero set of the tropicalization of these linear forms. But these are just linear forms. So the tropicalization is obtained by just uh, looking at the minimum of uh, the, the evaluation of the coordinates. So it gives you something quite simple to describe. Okay, so this is the theorem which was proved in 2007. Um, in Sorry, can I ask a question? Yes, yes. Uh, sorry. So uh, when you say we get an equation for X, uh, what what exactly does that mean on the torus? Uh, so, this so, equation so, sigma so, J in A C J X J. What does it mean? So here, here so you have X, then the map from X to here. Yeah. Is given by uh, sending uh, a point. Uh, so it has coordinate uh, X1. Xn to uh, L0 of X, Every Lm of X. Okay, so, the, and now, so now you see that if you have uh, li this, li this dependency between the, yes. the linear forms, then you get a linear dependency between the, the coordinates you see here at okay. X. Okay, so okay. every point of the of, the, uh, of X. X is the zero of this polynomial exactly will satisfy this uh, exactly okay okay thank you and uh, so this is the the, the theorem uh, which tells you that uh, the tropicalization of x in this setting in the context of high complements of hyperplane arrangement is given as the zero set of the tropicalization of these uh, linear polynomials but since CJs are uh, elements of C, the valuation at these elements was zero. So, and XJ, you just uh, replace it by XJ, so there is no product. So you just get uh, the, this is a zero set of this, uh, this tropical polynomial. 
which basically means that you just need to look at the minimum of, if you look at, if you want to find that localization, you look at all the points inside A0M, AM. A A M. Okay, forget about this for now, forget about the discussion, but you look at all the elements A0, AM, such that the minimum of these AIs uh, over A is achieved at least twice. And this A is the set of uh, the subs is a subset of uh, the index set, which is dependent because these are the ones exactly which give you these, these equations. But you see that here we are quotienting with uh, R1111 because uh, we are working inside this torus. Yeah, in this torus, you look at uh, the points of t power n plus one, but you are quotienting this by multiplication by, uh, by some scalar which comes from t1. When you pass to the tropicalization, you just remember the valuations. And if you have a scalar, the valuation of that scalar will be a, a real number. And that real number uh, gives you, I mean, when you, so the, the, the action here is given by product. When you pass to the valuation, it comes becomes a sum because you, you go to the tropical world and it gives you exactly an action of R on R plus one, R, plus, R power M plus one which is given by taking a scalar in R and adding this scalar to any coordinates of uh, Rm plus one. That is why the tropicalization of this, when you pass to tropicalization, this torus becomes R power M plus one, quotiented by the line in Rm plus one, given by uh, the vector one, 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 one. one. So, Omid, quick question. So the, these relations generate that uh, the image of X, right, in the, in the torus? Yes. That's that's uh, one point, one ingredient, and and then you're tropicalizing it with respect to the trivial valuation, right? Uh, yes. But so, the, so here, these are yeah. I mean, uh, the coefficients are inside the base field, and that base field is trivially valued. Right. Yeah. This I took uh, the, the the base field here to be C, C the field yeah. of complex numbers. Exactly. Right. 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 Yeah, exactly. So yeah, exactly. So if 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 your work, yeah, exactly. So if your if the field, the base field is not trivially valued, if, then of course you get affine function, not uh, linear functions. So here, you, the, the valuation of this question is zero. So it basically gives something quite simple. Okay. Sorry, another maybe silly question. What happens if there is no dependent A? Uh, yeah, so in, in that case, the, 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 the tropicalization is the full, uh, the full space. Oh, it's the full space, I see. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And this is, uh, okay, so we will see actually, this is uh, the case where you don't have any, uh, uh, the, okay, so I will now introduce just uh, the combinatorial structure, which remembers these dependencies, and then you will see why that in that case, it should be the full space. Okay, okay. Uh, so the combinatorial structure, which recalls uh, these uh, linear dependencies between uh, these, uh, these indices and these linear forms and so on, it's, uh, it is uh, some of one of the, one of the most interesting, probably, combinatorial objects, which was introduced by, by, uh, by, uh, by, I think, at the same time by at least uh, two or three mathematicians. Specifically, I think it is known uh, to, to be um, introduced by uh, one of the pioneers of singularity theory, Wittner, which has done, uh, which at some point was interested in graph theory, and he was interested in characterizing uh, the isomorphism classes of graphs. Uh, by looking just at the cycles inside the graph, by looking at the structure of the cycles inside the graph, so he he he, he solved this problem, and he introduced uh, this uh, this uh, nice combinator object, which is called the metroid. So what is a metroid? So the claim is that the hyperplane arrangement uh, defines a combinator object, which is called the metroid, and this metroid uh, is defined over this uh, set e uh, zero to m. And basically, everything that I described is completely described in terms of this metroid. So it's, everything is combinatorial. So the tropicalization of X admits a combinatorial description in terms of this metroid. So I, I'm not going to spend too much time on metroid, but I, 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 this, this is the basic example of a nice tropicalization and nice tropical varieties, which show up also later. So please. Uh, Maybe uh, in, if, if you're interested in the, 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 the concept, just uh, look at uh, the route of a text uh, which study this, uh, this, 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 these objects. But I just I tell you uh, what is this, what is this, uh, what, what, how this looks like, looks like, looks like. 
So a metroid is a is a is a, is, a, is a combinatorial structure which is supposed uh, to uh, to 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 give a combinatorial uh, axiomatization axiomatization of linear algebra. So it should uh, it's, it's a structure which uh, which gives you uh, the dependencies between vectors or uh, the, the 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 independency between the vectors and all the service spaces generated by some vectors and so on. So you start with uh, with uh, some set, some finite set. In this case, it's zero m. So in this case, we have the vectors because we started with some linear forms. But usually, you don't need to have the vectors. And then you just define a collection of sets. And in the case of metro, is any collection of these sets, any any single collection of the among these sets that I wrote written that I wrote, write, 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 I, I wrote, I have written here determines all the others. So the basic collection of sets which define the metroid are the bases. And uh, these are some, uh, some subset uh, B inside the index set, which are uh, remin reminiscent of uh, the bases which generate uh, the, the, which are to correspond to the vectors which generate the vector space generated by uh, the collection of vectors you started with. But as I said, you, you usually don't have the collection of vectors, you just have the collection of bases. Of course, you cannot start uh, with any collection of subsets of zero M. You have to put uh, to put some properties which are verified uh, by uh, or should be verified by this collection of uh, subsets of uh, zero M to call it a basis, the collection of bases for a metroid. And in the case of bases, this is very elegant. It is called the ax the, the exchange uh, axiom. So it is called uh, the exchange. axiom and this means that uh, you have the following property if you take uh, two elements b1 and the b2 in the collection of bases you are given to define your metroid so this is the collection of subsets b inside the 0m you take two of those uh, subsets of 0m then these two, uh, this pair should verify the following uh, exchange property that uh, if you take an element E, which is inside B1, but it is not inside B2, then, then you should be able to find an element of B2. Uh, sorry. Which is an element of uh, an element of P two, which is not in B one, such that uh, you can exchange uh, E against F and you remain a basis, such that if you remove uh, E from B one and you add F, then you are again in the collection of bases you have. I mean, it's easy to verify that if you had a collection of vectors in some vector space and you were taking uh, all the subsets uh, of uh, the index set 0m, such that those, uh, the corresponding vectors associated to this subset were generating the full space of the full vector subspace generated by those vectors, then this property is verified that every time you fix a basis, you take another basis and you take an element which is in the first but not in the second, then you can remove that element from the first space and get and add something coming from the second to remain again a basis. So this is called the exchange axiom and the a metroid is a structure. So it is a combinatorial structure, okay, which is defined on some ground set uh, E zero to M and uh, it has a collection of uh, subsets of 0m, which are called bases. And this collection of bases verify this exchange axiom. Okay. But as I said, uh, usually m comes with actually a collection of uh, other subsets. For example, if you, once you have fixed bases, then you can define a collection of independent sets. Okay. So this collection of independent sets what are the independent sets defined by the metroid? These are all the sets I, which come inside some B, such that this B belongs to the collection of bases you have fixed. 
So if you know the basis, you can in define independences. And even if you know the independent sets, you can also define bases because then you take uh, the independent sets, which are maximum. If you know the independent sets, you can define the dependent sets. The dependent sets or the dependent sets or the sets which are not independent. Once you know the dependent sets, then you can define what is called the circuits. And these circuits are the minimal independent, minimal dependent sets. So these are the sets which are not independent and they are minimal with respect to this property. You can also define uh, flats or closed sets. These are the combinatorial analogs of subspaces. So sub, I mean, vector, okay, vector subspace, if you are giving the collection of vectors. And it seems that these are exactly the ones which, which, which allow you to completely describe uh, the, the tropicalization of the complement of hyperplane management. What is a closed set determined by a metroid M? These are the set of, so these are the subsets F inside zero M, which verify the following property. Every time you get an element E, such that uh, E is dependent to F, Okay, so you have to say what, it, what this means, but it's not difficult to say what exactly E dependent to F means. E dependent to F means that uh, the independent set you can find in E union F, the maximum independent set you can find in E union F has the same size as the maximum independent set you can find in F. Okay, so every time you have an E which is dependent to F, then actually this E belongs to F already. Okay, so in terms of vector spaces, you have a vector space, which is the vector space generated by the collection of vectors. You take any sub vector subspace and you look at all the vectors in your collection of vectors, which are inside this vector subspace. And you call that a, a, a flat, a closed set. As you can see that, this, that, that those sets verify this, this, this property. But of course, as I said, you, you don't need to start with the collection of vectors. Basically, you just need uh, to define one of these, uh, these, uh, these, these, these collections of subsets. And uh, you, once you have one, then you have all the others. Okay, so now that I have, uh, I gave a very, very, very quick introduction to Metroid. Uh, let me just uh, describe the tropicalization of the complement of hyperplane arrangement by using uh, this commuter structure. So you, you, you started with a collection of hyperplanes, which were defined by these linear forms. And uh, the claim is that, uh, that uh, the metroid associated these linear forms, basically the flat, the closed sets you see, uh, determine completely the tropicalization of X. Okay, how does this work? Okay, they claim, so first of all, uh, the fundamental theorem or the theorem of uh, villain clearance tells you that the tropicalization of X is given by the set of, uh, is exactly the set of all vectors, A0, A, N, such that every time you see an, a dependent set, the minimum of, of AJ is achieved uh, at least twice. Okay. Hello, is there a question? Can you define circuits? Ah, circuits. So a circuit is a minimum. So this is these circuits are minimal. Dependent sets. Minimal with respect to inclusion. So if you take a subset of uh, zero to M and you call you, first of all, you ask this to be dependent. It's not in, independent. And you ask this to be the, the mini, minimal with respect to this property. It means that every time you remove one of the elements of this set, you get something independent. Okay. okay. Okay, so uh, so now the tropicalization of X is a given. So this is just the theorem I stated in the previous slide. And the claim is that this is completely described in terms of uh, the closed sets inside the, the corresponding metroid. 
And the idea is the following. You take, you take your vector A0 to AN. And uh, by, so what you do is that first, first of all, you can move uh, this vector by adding uh, a multiple of the vector one, 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 one. You move it such that, you know, in such a way that all the coordinates become, uh, become positive, okay? Become no negative. And you ask uh, at least one of the coordinates to be zero. Then if you, if you, if you, if you order these coordinates in an increasing order, then you can define, you can write uh, A as a, as a linear combination of uh, the characteristic vectors of some subsets of, uh, mm. so the if you have a subset F inside uh, zero to M, the characteristic vector of that subset is the vector which has zero one coordinates and the ones are exactly the coordinates which corresponds to elements of f okay so any vector in uh, rm plus one which is uh, which has a uh, old coordinates known zero and at least one of the these coordinates is zero can be written in this form in the form alpha 1, 1 f1, plus alpha 2, 1 f2, plus up to alpha k, 1 fk for some k, such that uh, these sets f1, f2, fk form a chain of inclusions. So f1 is uh, strictly included in f2, f2 is in strictly included in f3, and so on, up to fk, and fk is different from e. How do you find this uh, chain? So alpha one, you look at all the coordinates which are maximum because you see F1 is uh, the elements of F1 appears here, 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 here. These alpha one, alpha k's are positive, it's simply positive. So it means that uh, the elements of F1 are exactly this, the indices of coordinates which are maximum because uh, you see that for F1, elements of F1, you have alpha one coordinate at the element of F1 is alpha one plus alpha two plus alpha three up to alpha k. So we can define F1 as the set of indices which have maximum, maximum coordinates. Then you define F2 as the set of coordinates which have the second maximum, F3 and so on. So you get a chain of uh, inclusion of subsets of uh, the this set E, which is the set of uh, indices, 0, 1, 2, n. So any vector uh, in Rm plus one, quotiented by R111 can be written in this form. So it gives you exactly a chain of this form. And now the proposition is that uh, because this property is verified, then all the sets f1, f2, to fk that you see here are closed. These are closed sets. These are closed sets in the Metroid. It means that uh, the, these sets, uh, any of these sets verify uh, this property that is written here. Okay, so this is a this is a this is a this is a this is a, this is not very difficult to prove. I just leave it uh, as an exercise, and in the notes that I sent you, these expanded notes, you can find a, a proof of this uh, proposition. But the, the fact is that now this uh, this tells you that any point in the tropicalization can be written as a convex combination, I mean as a positive combination of the characteristic vectors associated to closed sets. And actually, it is given by chain of closed sets inside uh, the, the metric. And, okay. Sorry. Uh, can I ask, uh, how do you define the metroid? Is it defined by these all these dependent sets? And you can define, for example, by looking at dependencies. Absolutely. So, or you can define by looking at the base, by defining the basis. No, no. I know in general, I understand. But how, how do no. you relate the tropicalization of X with the metroid? Yes, so what you have to do is that you have to, okay, so because you started with uh, this collection of uh, vectors, L0, these are linear forms, yeah? Yes. So these, uh, these are linear forms, so, so they, they, are, they live inside the, the linear space, this, this complex vector space of linear forms, okay? So yes. there's a vector space and these are vectors inside that vector space. Yes. So they, they generate a metroid. How, they do, how do they generate? You can define, for example, the basis. So the, first of all, the ground set is uh, the set zero to M. Uh -huh. The bases are the collection of uh, linear forms, which are, which are linearly independent, independent. maximum. Yes. 
aspect. Yes. And everything else is determined then. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So these um so is it true that the uh, in your definition of trop x you have these a depend this capital a dependent, dependent yes. things uh, do they form the flats no they don't form if they, they don't form no these ones are the, the description this description do not use flats it uses dependent sets okay or it uses you can also replace this dependent set by minimum dependent sets which are circuits you can okay. replace sure. uh -huh. Uh -huh. okay but but then out of this description which is coming from uh, the the base i mean this the fundamental theorem you get uh, the the alternative description in terms of flats okay which okay. is more convenient why it is more convenient because uh, this is somehow sim completely combinatorial now you have just you just know to know what is the metroid yeah and that your points are exactly the convex combination, the positive combinations of characteristic vectors of right. uh, flats in a chain. You take any chain, you take a, you look at the corresponding characteristic vector, and then you form, you form a positive combination of those kinds. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, thank you. So this is very convenient because now you can say exactly what is the the, the tropicalization of uh, the complement of high arrangement. So this is the this is the complete description now. Okay, so you fix a, a flag of flats. It means that the chain of uh, inclusions of uh, closed sets inside the okay. So, so usually in the smart rate terminology, the flats, the, I mean both flat and closed sets are used. Okay, so that's why. But I think closed set is somehow more talking, yeah, because uh, because of this uh, because of the, the property that I that, that defines uh, that this this. Uh, uh, Okay, so you take a, the, a chain of uh, flats of your metroid, these are F1, F2 to Fk, and you assume that uh, they are non-empty, and, uh, and also the last one is not equal to E, and then you form this cone, this, uh, this cone, this cone sigma F, which is generated by the characteristic vectors of F1, F2 up to Fk. Yeah, these are all the positive combinations of 1F1 and F1FK. And it turns out that uh, the tropicalization of X is exactly the union of these cones. Okay, so this is, this, is, this is the complete characterization. And actually, you can view, you can see that these cones, these, uh, these sigma F that you have defined, these verify the following property, that if you take two of these, uh, First of all, if you take uh, uh, a sigma among these sigma f's, and if you take a face tau of the sigma, this is a face. Okay, so let's say you take a sigma f, you take a tau, which is a face of sigma f, then tau itself is of the form sigma g for some flag g, for some flag g, which is of the form g1. GL. Okay, so it means that uh, this collection of cones that you define is closed on their taking faces of the cones which are already there. And it verifies also the following second uh, property that if you take two of these guys, two of these cones, then the intersection of these ones, these cones, is also of the form sigma h for some h, which is a, a chain of, which is given by chain of flags, which is a chain of flags, and flats, so. Okay, so it means that uh, this collection of cones that you have here is closed also undertaking intersection, and this intersection is actually a common face, common face of uh, both uh, the cone sigma f and uh, sigma g. Okay, so that's why, it, so this, it, a collection of cones which verify these two properties is called the fan. And since uh, each of these cones have rays which are uh, rational, which have uh, rational coordinates, in this case, the original, you see that these, these vectors are rational, then you call this a rational fan. So the claim is that the tropicalization of the complement of hyperplane arrangement has a structure of a rational fan, and this rational, this, this fan structure is completely explicit in terms of the chains of uh, closed sets inside the metroid. 
Okay, so this motivates now the following definition, the, the definition of uh, the Bergman fan associated to a metric. So the idea is that now that you just, you can completely forget about uh, the, the, the variety, the complement of hyperplan arrangement and the embedding you get inside the torus, linear, all the equations and so on. Basically, you can associate uh, this object or the, or the combinator analog of this object by taking this as the definition because everything is now combinatorial. Yeah? So right. you take, yes. Why is it a rational fan? I mean, your hyperplanes are not defined in terms of rational coordinates. No, no. So, but you, 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 the hyperplanes are defined over some field, but the tropicalization is defined over R. And in R, you have uh, integers. Yeah. So but, this is uh, this is a cone. This is a cone. It lives inside some some R power n plus one divided by R one one one. So inside, yes. so you look at the rational vectors inside the. Uh, you can define the rational vectors inside that vector space. Okay? Yes. And this is rational in with respect to disrupt those rational vectors. It means that the rays which generate each of the cones are rational. So they, they are given by, they have a generating vector, which is rational, which, is, which has integer coordinates. And you see, I mean, you see it here, yeah? Because these are the generating vectors. I mean, in this case, it is easy to see that these are the generating vectors. Basically, these are the generating, these are all the rays. 1f1, 1f2 to 1fk are all the rays of this, this, this cone. So this cone has this cone has k rays in this example. And it has a, it, these are exactly uh, these, these are exactly generated by 1f1, 1f2. And you see that these are rational. All the coordinates are 0, 1. So they are integer, integer vectors. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, okay, so then you just, uh, so to any metroid, you associate the same, uh, the same, uh, the same sigma n as uh, the union of uh, the cones uh, sigma f, which, I mean, you get exactly the same definition, the definition that, uh, that comes out of the tropicalization, but you, now you don't need to know what are the vectors and so on, you just need to know what are the, what is the combinatorial structure, the metroid there. Okay, so so let me now. So I mean, so could, let me, you, go back, I was, could you go back? I was just noting the definition of the Bergman. Sure. Yeah. So the definition of a Bergman fan uh, again. So you you start with the metroid M, which is defined over over this uh, this uh, ground set. So it's a fan. It's a subset of R M plus one. R one one one, which is the union of the cones of sigma f, and these sigma f's are associated. So these are the cones generated by the characteristic vectors of a chain of uh, flats inside them. So k is any integer, and f one f k uh, just are closest. I mean, of course, you cannot have infinite chains because e is finite, mm -hmm. okay. and it's the length of this chain is. Uh, you can see that the length of this chain is bounded by by uh, the by the, the size of the, 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 the basis. So every time you go from Fi to Fj, you, you increase the, the size of the independent set. So at some point you can get, you cannot go above the size of the, the, the base the basis, the element of the basis. And that is called the rank of uh, the metric. So the, somehow yeah, the rank of the metric, the rank in terms of the image. Okay, so then I, I, let me just tell you a little bit of what are the, the basic uh, properties. I think this, this example was somehow very talk, talking because what you want to do now is that uh, the aim of the, 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 the other lectures, which show, which, which should come up, is to show that actually basically you can just start, uh, you can now work uh, directly with the polyhedral structures that you get uh, out of, because you don't need to know. Uh, for, for many things, you don't need to know what are, what are the algebraic varieties coming. So you basically look at the tropicalization. You, you, this is something which is combinatorial, polyhedral combinatorial, and then you would like to do a geometry, or you would like to, to do analysis, or we would like to do, to do all kind of mathematics over these, uh, these, these combinatorial objects. And usually in some cases, they are defined, for example, for metroids or defined by uh, some uh, some uh, some some basic properties which are uh, which give you the flexibility of. Uh, uh, to, can, you, can you show the last German space? Can you show the last German space? Sorry, this one. Yeah, this I, is called, this is called the Bergman fan. Okay.
Okay, so now I would like to, to make a list of uh, properties which are verified by tropicalizations. Uh, uh, and these properties are somehow, uh, it gives rise to definitions of uh, polyhedral objects which form uh, the, 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 the local charts for, for more general uh, tropical uh, spaces. So we start uh, with the base field. Uh, again, the setup is the setup is algebraic. So I just uh, come on, start here. I make a list of properties of the tropicalizations, and then we, we talk those properties as definition of uh, uh, some polyhedral uh, objects, some uh, tropical objects. Okay, by forgetting about the, the algebraic geometric uh, context. So K is a base field. K, the big K is a value field. You have evaluation subset of some T and K, and then you talk, you take uh, the ideal of definition. So the first case that to consider, I start with the first case. This is the case where the field, the base field K is trivially valued. It means that the restriction of the valuation over K is trivial. And trivial means that any element is sent to uh, zero. It's any invertible non-zero element is sent to zero, and zero is of course sent to infinity. So the, the basic example, I mean, forget about the general case, is this, this one, k equal to c, uh, and uh, the big k is the field of uh, uh, Pisa series. OK, as we saw, the fundamental theorem implies that the tropicalization of x is the set of uh, all the points in Rn. So we started with t and k. So it's the set of all the points in Rn, such that for any Laurent polynomial f, in the ideal of definition of X, this minimum is achieved at least twice. But CJs are elements of uh, C, so the valuation of CJ is trivial, so you can forget it, and you just, uh, you just get a linear form. You just get some linear function. A, this is a function which, has, uh, which is linear in uh, the coordinates of A1, AN, and the coefficients are this j1, jn, which are given by the exponents of j. So this, this gives you an, an integral linear function on Rn. Okay, so from this description, you see clearly that uh, the tropicalization of uh, x is invariant on their multiplication by scalars, which are positive. Why? Because there is no, this is zero, so you just get this form. So if a1, a n verify this, uh, this property, then lambda times a1, lambda times a n also verify the same property as soon as lambda is bigger than or equal to zero. Yeah, because uh, I mean, if the minimum is achieved for a1, a n twice, then lambda, if you multiply every element, you multiply all the terms by lambda, so you have the same property. Okay, so this is the first property. And this property tells you that uh, this, this means that uh, the set of trope X is a cone. I mean, it's a cone in the, in the broad sense, trope X is a general, general, generalized cone. It means that, uh, it, I mean, what is a cone? A cone means that uh, some, some subspace, some, sub, some sub, subset of uh, Rn, which is closed on the multiplication by squares. It's not, I mean, so it's a generalized cone. In that, of course, you saw that it's not always the it's a cone in the conventional uh, uh, conventional way. So it is a, it is a subset of Rn which is uh, closed on their products by scalars. For example, uh, this we can have this shape. For example, yeah. So this is a one-dimensional uh, case of a tropicalization. You see that these are rays. These are half rays, and uh, this is zero. Okay, so I make a list of uh, properties. So we saw in the case of the complement of hyperplane arrangement that uh, of course you have a lot of equations which are verified by X, but uh, the, we, we only needed finitely many of those equations to, to define the tropicalization, to find the tropicalization. And those were given by uh, looking at uh, linear forms in the case of complement of hyperplane arrangement. Uh, and in, in the general case, this is the property you have this finiteness property, which tells you that basically, in order to define the tropical, to find the tropicalization of x, you know you you have infinitely many equations usually which are verified for x, for x, but you just need to look at finitely many of those equations. So there exists f one 
up to Fn, such that the tropicalization of X can be obtained as the intersection of zero set of trope Fj. Okay, so we just need to take, take finitely many intersections and the trope Fj is exactly given by this one. And you see that this is a, this is, this is, this has a polyhedral. So this is given in terms of some inequalities and some equalities. So basically you need only finitely many inequalities and equalities to define the tropicalization of X. And each of those equalities and inequalities only involve integral linear forms. Okay, so this means that uh, the tropicalization of X is polyhedral, is the support of a rational, and not, so not in, the case, in this case, not, not only it is polyhedral, but it's also support of a rational fan in our end. Okay, so it is composed of, uh, it can be decomposed into a finitely many uh, rational core inside our end. As, as we saw in the example, the, the example of the complement of hyperbolic arrangement, we found explicitly those cones. In general, it is difficult to find maybe explicitly those cones, uh, as nice as uh, we did for the case of complement of hyperbolic arrangement, but the theorem tells you that this exists. And we have this nice property about the dimension is that the tropicalization of X remembers the dimension of X. So not everything is lost. I mean, the dimension of a variety is the basic uh, numerical invariant you can associate to that variety and this is preserved on the tropicalization. So the tropicalization of X as a subset of uh, Rn, it is a polyhedral subset. So you can associate to it uh, a, 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 a notion of dimension. You don't need to use a fancy notion of dimensions for general subsets of Rn. This is a polyhedral subset. So you can look at this, the dimension of the maximum cone, which appears inside Rn, inside this set. And then that, that is the dimension of tropicalization. And that dimension is exactly the dimension of X. So you can read off the dimension of X from uh, tropicalization. Okay, so now this motivates uh, the defini this definition. Uh, Omid, there is a question in the chat box. Is the finiteness property coming from uh, the Hilbert basis theorem? Uh, so uh, you need, you need. I mean, of course, uh, the basic, uh, the, the basic thing you need is uh, is uh, the, the finite, finiteness properties. Uh, the type of finiteness properties you find in uh, in, com in algebraic uh, geometry. In commutative algebra, but you need more actually because it's it is not true that uh, you can take any uh, collection of uh, 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 polynomials which generate i. You you need to, somehow sometimes you need to expand this, but uh, but, uh, but but the claim is that you can find uh, basically you can also find that those uh, those. Uh, I, I think in, if you look at uh, the notes I sent you there in the last in the second part. Uh, there is a there, there is a description of so so the, this this set of uh, this set of uh, polynomials in I are, are called tropical uh, generating sets uh, and uh, it's I think if you would like if your question is uh, is it possible to put some structure exactly tell exactly what are these tropical generating sets I think this is still uh, not completely uh, described as a uh, so I think it's a question. It's an interesting question to give somehow a complete description of all the it's, tropical bases. So, yes, it's fair to say it's closer to something like Grobner bases, right? Yes, exactly. So that, I mean, of course, so the Grobner bases is the basic of uh, basic uh, basic uh, machinery uh, uh, behind all these uh, these theorems. So uh, yes, but uh, but I think uh, in this case you you it's, you you need a more refined analysis of. Uh, uh, everything which is come which, which comes out of the combinatorial, which is because it combinatorial commutative edge. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let me now introduce uh, this uh, fundamental notion. So it's a notion uh, which is not probably. I mean, this is probably the first time you you see this uh, terminology, even if you know topical. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not yet a standard. So this is uh, this is the way we we call uh, these spaces. Uh, uh, which are which are coming out of tropicalizations and are more generally uh, anything which looks like them. So let's so these are called we call them fanfold. What is fanfold? The fanfold is a subset of R n. Okay, it's, it's it is it is supposed to remember to recall uh, the definition of manifolds and uh, 
Okay, so the fan, a fan fold is a, is a subset of our end, uh, which is the support of a rational fan in our end. So you don't know, you don't need to know the polyhedral decomposition into rational cones. You just you, just, you have just the subset, and you say that this is a fan fold if it ad, it admits a polyhedral decomposition into rational cones. And of course, this this polyhedral decomposition this is not unique because every time you have something, you can subdivide it, you can add more cones. So, but I mean, so what you need to do or to know is the set, the set uh, itself. It's like when you define manifolds, you can, when you find you define a manifold, you take a set of parts and you, you deploy them and you ask. But at the end, uh, the manifold itself, it's, uh, if you do geometry with manifold, you don't, uh, you don't, uh, you, sometimes you use the charts, but the, 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 the definition, the collection of charts you use is not unique. So this is, this is the same situation here. So it, the subset of our N, which has a rational, which is a support of a rational fan in our end is called a fan fold. Okay, uh, so here this is an example of uh, a fan fold. Uh, you see there there are three cones of I mean this the, the composition here into a rational fan is very talking because you have, I mean you see there are three two dimensional cones and uh, there are six. A one dimensional uh, cone here, and then there is this uh, this central uh, point. And these cones are exactly the cones which define uh, some rational fan structure on this support. But the support, the support itself is called fan fold, and any rational uh, fan structure you put here is called the polyhedral structure on this one, the fan structure on this one. As you see here, you can, uh, this is this fan structure is not unique because, for example, you can uh, subdivide this fan into three smaller cones. So when you work with fan folds, you forget about the, 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 support, the, the structure of the fan. Sometimes you fix the fan, sometimes you don't. So what is, what is important is this subset of our end. So this is a fan fold, but the tropical fan fold is a fan fold which, uh, which, which, which remembers some properties of uh, the, the, the tropicalizations of sub -parities. And this is captured in the following important uh, property of uh, uh, the fan fold, which are coming from geometry, which is called the balancing condition. So a tropical fan fold is a fan fold which can be endowed with a weight function, omega. And it, this weight function is supposed to verify the balancing condition. Okay, I will, I will say exactly what this balancing condition means in a second, in the next slide. But usually this weight function uh, is, a, is supposed to be equal to one. In this case, it is called the uh, reduced tropical fan fold. But since uh, I'm going at the, I mean, in the next two lectures, I'm going to suppose that the weight function is equal to one. Also everything I'm just, um, many of the things I'm just, I'm going to, to, to describe can be extended to the case where the, the, the weight is not necessarily equal to one. It can take more larger values, but uh, the, fundamental, uh, the fundamental case is the case where the, somehow the weight function is equal to one. So in this case, uh, it, I just call tropical fan fold. Okay, so I suppose that the weights are equal to one. And then there, there, there is a, so the, 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 you have the balancing condition, but what is the balancing condition? First of all, uh, can I go a little, I mean, so I think I started a little bit later. Can I have five or six minutes to? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, so the balancing condition is the condition which comes out of the structure theorem in the local case, in the case here. So I just uh, list here, and then uh, you will see that uh, it will make precise the definition of a tropical fan fold. Okay, so this is the theorem which gives you the definition of the tropical fan fold. The tropical fan fold is a, is a fan fold which verifies these properties that are listed here, okay? Of course, there is no X, it's a subset of our N which verifies the polyhedral properties which are coming out of the structure theorem. So this is the second fundamental theorem somehow of a tropical geometry in the local case, in the case where you work with K, which is trivially, it's the base field is there's no valuation, so you see. Uh, okay, so let me just, this is, this makes a precise the structure of the tropicalization of X. Uh, for this theorem, uh, we have to suppose that uh, the, the, the sub variety of the torus is zero decibel. This means that the corresponding ideal of definition is prime. 
and uh, d is the dimension of x. Okay, so the first uh, property, in the, the first uh, the claim in the structure theorem is that uh, the, tro the tropicalization of x is pure dimensional. And uh, as, we, as I just um, mentioned, the dimension is preserved. So it has the same dimension as x, which is this d. And it is pure dimensional. And pure dimensional means that uh, you exclude this. I mean, there is not, it cannot be the case that uh, a tropicalization has, uh, for example, a set of cones of dimension two, and all of a sudden there is a single, single there is a ray which shows up. Okay. The dimension is pure. It means that if you look at the polyhedral structure, the fan structure on the tropicalization, all the maximal cones have the same dimension. So it's, this is pure dimensionality. It is endowed with a weight function. Okay. And this weight function is defined on the d-dimensional cones of uh, any fan structure you put. So it, this is the support of a fan structure as we, as we saw in the polyhedral uh, theorem in the, in the next, in the last slide. And this, uh, this, uh, this weight function is something which is, which is coming from uh, com commutative algebra by looking at uh, the ideal of definition. Okay, it, it takes some time to just uh, set up uh, the terminology and to see what are the, to explain what it is, but, as, but in the notes uh, I sent you, you can find uh, the, 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 the description of the weights. Uh, okay, so but the, the, the sense is that this is a weight function. It takes value inside n, inside integers, positive integers. And it verifies that this fundamental property, which is the balancing property. And this is something to, which is, uh, which is uh, okay, so you can see, you can view this property uh, in different ways. Uh, I think uh, maybe the, in terms of what is going to come uh, later in the talks, this property, you can view it as some sort of orientation. It tells you that the tropicalization of X is orientable somehow. You can define some volume form, you can define some, uh, Okay, so I think this is maybe the, the, the best explanation in terms of uh, geometry. Okay, it verifies the following balancing property. And this balancing property is the following property that if you fix uh, this, uh, this, uh, this fan structure on the tropicalization, then you look at a, a cone, which is in the, fa in the fan, and it has dimension D minus one. Then you have this, uh, this equation. What is this equation? And this is happening, of course, for all two inside sigma of dimension d minus one. So you get a system of uh, equations which are verified between uh, the weight and uh, these vectors that I just described now. Okay, so this is your, uh, this is a part of your, uh, your, your, your tropicalization. In this, ex in this picture, this is uh, the fan two. Okay, so this is the cone. So this is the cone two. And these three cones that you see here are the cones of sigma in the fan, which contain uh, two strictly. So they are maximal dimensional. So these are of dimension D. So now what you look at are these normal vectors. So you take a point here and you look at all the normal vectors, which a point inside the uh, sigma for the corresponding cone. So here you go from tau to this cone sigma, and this is this vector E sigma tau. Okay, you get three vectors. These are the three vectors here that you see. So you get one vector here, one vector here, and one vector in the green part. And uh, since I'm using E, it means that this vector is a generating vector for which a space. So you have to remember that uh, these are rational uh, cones. So any rational cone is generated by rational uh, vectors. So these, these rays that you see here are rational. So what you can do is that you can look at uh, the, the integral vector, which uh, show up uh, inside this cone, and you look at uh, the lattice they generate, okay? Every time you have a cone sigma, because sigma is rational, you get a lattice that you will call N sigma, okay? So now here you have a lattice associated to this. This is the lattice generated by integer vectors you see inside this uh, cone. And you have also tau. It has its own lattice, which is the lattice generated by uh, the integer, integer vectors you see inside tau. So then you get these two uh, lattices in tau and in sigma, okay? And this vector, 
E sigma over tau. This is the vector. This is a normal vector to tau. So this is a, ve this is a vector which is pointing toward uh, sigma out of tau. And it is, it is supposed to generate this n sigma over n tau. Okay, of course, it is not well defined uniquely because if you take uh, this any vector, then you can add uh, a vector inside n tau and it will give you another normal vector which is generating n sigma over n tau, but it is well defined up to uh, a vector which is tangent to tau. So this is in this normal, this is, a, this is called a primitive vector or primitive normal vector. It's a relative notion. So this is a primitive vector for sigma relative to tau. So that's why it lives inside n sigma over n tau. Okay. Um, so here, this is so this is this vector lives. This is this is a uh, e sigma two is inside here, and this equation is happening inside the space, the full space, which is R n uh, uh, related to n two uh, n two uh, the, the vector space generated by R. Or you can say that this is happening inside Zn divided by n2, which means that actually you have uh, this, uh, this, 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 this is zero. So it means that this vector, if you choose uh, actually an actual vector inside like this, then the sum of these vectors will be tangent to n2. So if you take the sum, the weighted sum, so because these are these weights, these weights are associated with these cones, three di dimensional cones. You look at the weighted sum of these uh, primitive normal vectors to uh, from uh, tau to sigma, and the sum of these, uh, the sum you get is a vector which is tangent to tau, so it will be zero if you quotient out by uh, the vector space generated by uh, by tau. Okay, so it means that this is, so this is called the balancing condition, and now the, the, this is a definition of a tropical fan fold. You see, a tropical fan fold is a fan fold which verify which is pure dimensional. You don't need to know x, okay? So this, there's no x, there's this y. y is a subset of Rn. It has a pure dimension, and this dimension, you call it the dimension of the fan fold, it is d. It is endowed with the rate function, but as I said, we will assume that the rate function is one, and it verifies the following balancing property, that every time you fix a fan structure on, uh, on uh, the fan fold, then you get uh, the sum of these vectors that you can define equal to zero inside here. So W omega will be equal to one starting from the, the, the next lecture. It will simplify and also make simple. Okay, so this was the properties in the local case. And the, the third lecture will be to, to just uh, describe a little bit of geometry of these uh, tropical manifolds. And uh, the, the, so in the notes, I didn't, I didn't finish my, uh, lecture, my the, the last slide of my lecture. It is the structure theorem in the general case. I send it to you, you can view it. And the, base, the, the structure theorem in the general case says to you that basically uh, you have the same picture in the general. Uh, the only difference is that you don't have a, you don't have a fan, but uh, you have a polyhedral structure, which is rational. And locally, uh, you have, it looks like a fan fold. So your, your tropicalization locally, it's like a fan fold. It means that basically, a, 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 tropic, a tropicalization is obtained by gluing, uh, by gluing somehow of uh, tropical fan folds. So tropical fan folds uh, determine the charts you need to define more general tropical uh, varieties. It's uh, like, uh, yeah, they give you rise to tropical manifolds. So, yeah. Okay. So I think uh, there is this example uh, which explains I think I, maybe I, I'm already out of time, so I stop here. If there's any questions. Thank you. Yes. Th thank you. Thank you, Omid. Thank, uh, thanks, thanks for the very interesting talk. Yeah. Questions? Comments? Yeah, yes. I have a question. Uh, in the hyperplane arrangement case, if you take the complement and use the tropicalization, uh, the largest set of closed sets that flats, is it the uh, rank of the intersection per set of the hyperplane arrangement? Uh, exactly, exactly. And, exactly. Uh, and it's pure? It is pure, exactly. It oh, is okay. pure. Okay. Because you have this diamond property. So, I mean, these are some geometric lattices. So, these are geometric. Geometric. So. Okay. Okay. 
Thank you. Yeah. Maybe 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 it's minus one. So you see, I mean the, the maybe there is the length minus one. You have to you have to check that. But it is described by that rank. Absolutely. Any other questions from the offline audience? Any comments? Online yes. audience, there are some questions. Um, yes. Okay, so so there is one question probably. So yes, so the tab. Uh, AV team, can they hear? Can you please unmute? Unmute Som Dutta, please. AV team. Ah, yes, it's done. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, so my question is, so suppose uh, you start with some polynomial, say A, A1 X, X, uh, A1, uh, suppose you start with a polynomial with one variable, say a AX plus BX square plus CX is Q plus DX4, etc. Mm -hmm. And those uh, indices, those superscripts will become the uh, basis for the vectors in the tropicalization, right? Mm -hmm. For instance, one, two, three, four will become like the ve basis vectors for the tropicalization, right? Uh, could you please repeat? You say that you start with one equation. Yeah, so so suppose you have a suppose you have a polynomial in one variable. Ah, uh, just in one variable. Yeah. So so right. you have ax plus bx square plus cx cubed, etc. Okay. Now when you tropicalize uh, Forget about the addition part, the multiplication part will simply become two times, uh, so one times AX plus two times BX plus three times CX, where the- No, it will be, so this one, you have, I mean, you have to take the valuation. But yeah, 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 you have, to, you have to figure out the valuation. But so let's yeah. say you have you be alpha plus Y for the first one, X, the subtraction of X. Yeah, 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 yeah. It will be beta plus, plus two Y. Two Y, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Uh, now, is the understanding that the one, two, three, four, et cetera, they behave like the basis vectors for the tropical manifold because uh, these, uh, when, you, when you had this X, X to the J's, X to the J's in, the, in, your, in your initial expression, the J's uh, became the basis vectors for the tropical manifold, if I am not wrong. No, I mean in, in this case, uh, it's uh, it is okay. So in, okay, let me just maybe then I can use also to explain this uh, if you make it clear. So this in this case, you have a you have a polynomial which is dependent only in one variable. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So it is the case of uh, uh, basically the the, the the variety defined this by this is just a set of points. Yeah, that is. The zero state is a set of points, and then you want to tropicalize this, then you get just a set of points. Mm, that is correct. And now you would oh. like to see how you find this, okay? So what you do, I, I explained how you, the case of hypersurfaces work. So what you do is that you look at the exponents uh, that you see here, then you take the convex all of those exponents. This gives you a, a Newton polynomial, Newton polytope. So in this case, it will be just the interval. And it starts from, let's say here, because you started with from one, you start from one and it goes to n. Okay, now you look at uh, the set of all uh, non zero uh, coefficients here. So it will, you look at the exponents, it gives you a set of uh, integer points here. Yeah. Okay. And then you use these uh, alphas, which are the valuation of these two, or lift these points. For example, here, this will be lifted here. This will be lifted here. So, so in this case, you are using uh, these, uh, these guys as heights, as heights of these points. Yeah. So this is the height. Exactly. And then you lift it here, and then you lift it here. And then what you do is that you just uh, take uh, the- Convex hole. Exactly, you take the convex hole uh, here, here, here. And then what you see is that uh, basically here, in this case, you just see this. This is the set you see. And uh, the convex hole will be just this, okay? 
And if you look at the bounded faces, you just see this is this is these are these two are the only bounded faces. Everything else is disappears. So when you project down, then you just get a, this uh, this this uh, subdivision. So this is one of the cells, which is the image of this this face. And there is another uh, there is another uh, face. There is another face of this subdivision, which is this one, which is the image of this one. So maybe I just get this that color. So this is so. And this is the one, this is one of the bounded faces. It gives you this cell. And this is the other one, which gives you this cell. So now the tropicalization is exactly the dual of this subdivision, which means that uh, in this case, you will just have one point here and one point here. So basically, I mean, if you, if you want to read it from the exponents, it tells you that some of the exponents, you they come into intervals. In this case, the, all the exponents that you had here form this interval, yeah. and the other exponents form this interval. And for each of these uh, intervals, you have a, you have a, you have a, you have a point. Yeah, uh, is in the tropicalization. Okay, and, and the tropicalization will be just a set of points, so which are given by these intervals. Yeah, and uh, and uh, what would the corresponding thing to taking the minimum value of those two points be? I mean, because that that's so how the it is at this values. point. This point here that you have here, it it, it it is exactly the the point which is the minimum, the common minimum of all the terms you see yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that is that is it. I mean, so there is there is a unique minimum for all of them, and this minimum is this point. For this one, for the second interval, you have two terms. This this point is the minimum, the common minimum of the two. Yeah. Okay. I mean, out of the out of all. So it, first of all, these two should be equal. Yeah. It gives you an equation. It determines uh, it determines x up to uh, mm, yeah. In this case, it determines uh, y. It determines y actually. So it gives you a, it gives you the point y. Yeah. And automatically, in this case, it, it gives you y, and it it is it is a smaller. This is the minimum. Yeah, because that's how you get the defines. In this picture, it is a little bit more complicated because you have, you, this is the case where you have two variables. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then this is the Newton uh, polytope. And this is the subdivision, the dual is this. And it has a more structure. And then here, the idea was to explain that uh, the weight you can read it, you can put, so you have to put the weight on all these arrays. And also on this segment, and this way you can read it by looking at uh, the integer length of any of the in everything you see here. So the number of integer points which uh, show up uh, on this segment minus one is the weight you associated to the corresponding dual uh, segment or dual array. Sorry, what are the weights again? I mean, how what do the weights correspond so to? In the case of hypersurfaces, it's very easy to describe the weights. Okay, and these weights are given by uh, by uh, integer length of the corresponding segment. So there is this duality, which tells you that, uh, in, let's say they are in dimension two. So the one dimensional ray, the maximal dimensional ray of the tropicalization, which is this uh, orange uh, shape, uh, correspond to segments in the subdivision. So this corresponds to this segment, there is this duality. This is the dual face to this uh, segment. But this segment is a segment which, co which connects uh, two integer points. So if you have a segment which connects the two integer points in R2, then you can count the number of integer points you see on that segment. And you count the number of integer points, so here it will be one, two, three, four. You, you take the number of these integer points minus one. And this one, you put it as a weight uh, of uh, this, the dual, this, is, this will be the weight. So the weight of this ray is exactly the number of integer points you see on in this dual segment minus one. The, the weight here will be the number of integers you see here, minus one. The weight here will be the, num the number of integers you see here. And the claim is that if you do, if you take the generating vectors for these rays and you do this, the weighted sum of these generating vectors, you, you get zero. And uh, I think this is the basic case you can check. It's a, it has a nice uh, proof. It has an elementary proof, which is very nice. You just, I mean, you have to just look at the rotation of this by, by 90 degrees, and then you see that basically you're adding just, uh, you're adding just uh, these vectors here. Also for, uh, for, a, uh, for a polytomial with two variables, I would have supposed that you would have gotten uh, two lines instead of three lines, 
instead of instead of a triangle i, I don't see how you get a triangle because uh, one of yeah, them no, was this, to... this is the this is the newton polytope so you have uh, two variables x1 uh, x2 yeah the exponents are uh, j1 j2 correct so any exponent gives you a, a vector j1 j2 and you take the convex order of these vectors. So this gives you a two-dimensional polytope, yeah? Because you're taking convex order of uh, vectors are with, uh, of length two. So this is a two-dimensional polytope. In this case, it's this triangle. Okay. Now you take a subdivision. So it gives you this decomposition into uh, triangles in this example. Not always you get triangles. It might be the case that you get some polygons. But uh, more, so you get these triangles in this example, and the, now you take the dual, it means that you put a vertex for any triangle, and every time you have a segment, you have uh, some segments or some ray here. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then of course you have, uh, you have, uh, if you have also the vertices in this subdivision, which corresponds to these two dimensional, uh, two dimensional uh, cells in the dual, but of course, this is not part of the tropicalization. This case, if this is your question, these big cells, which corresponds to zero dimensional element in the subdivision, they are, they are not part of the tropicalization because okay. these are the set of points where the minimum is achieved exactly at this, at this, at this exponent, at this point. It is unique term for any element here. There is a unique term in, among these, uh, these, uh, these monomials, which uh, where the minimum is achieved. So it cannot be uh, a point of the tropicalization. So you have to remove all these points. These are not part of the, these are not part of the tropicalization. Because That's of why the minimization it, criterion. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay, okay. so I think uh, we are way over time. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we should thank uh, uh, Umid again for his nice lectures. Thank you very much uh, and uh, enjoy. Uh, so see you so, tomorrow. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow uh, yeah. at the same time, I guess. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.